this video we want to talk about corruption in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank with Fatah. Uh, I've got this nice little article and it talks about corruption. corruption. Now there's 1.8 million people living in the Gaza Strip. Most of them are refugees. They endure an employment rate that reaches 40%. Shameful poverty, rock bottom wages and, and to top it all an apparently corrupt regime with an extreme political ideology that finds it convenient to perpetuate poverty. Uh, uh, most of what I'm going to say in, the, uh, in this article is from Arab sources, not Israeli sources. Well, All right, it's Arabs talking about Hamas and Fatah, uh, the, the corruption. Uh, in the Arab press, particularly in Egypt, there are countless stories about the corruption in Hamas. The Egyptians are no fans of Hamas and their own regime is corrupt enough, but we present here a few experts from the welter of stories about Hamas financial criminality. According to the Palestinian news agency Wafa, the Hamas movement is in the throes of an economic crisis in its political, military and social institutions after a number of corruption affairs um, within it were exposed. Public anger was forced the movement to bring many activists accused of corruption to justice to avoid a revolution in the Gaza Strip. Some of the cases involved bribery in the justice system itself. According to one report, the Hamas political bureau held several meetings to discuss the many corruption affairs connected to the financing of the movement institutions in the Gaza Strip. The financing of the Is Ad Din Al Qassam brigades, and especially payments of activists' wages. Moreover, the movement's financial statements show that bad investments were made in real estate in Saudi Arabia, in Syria, and in Dubai, leading to the loss of tens of millions of dollars that have been earmarked for rehabilitating the Gaza Strip. Sources cited these reports said the money was raised in Europe and the Gulf states through the charity coalition. Now that's a big, that's a big phony. All these charities and the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, which transferred money to Hamas in exchange for an attack on Israeli targets. Of course, the most prominent corruption affair was one involving Ayman Taha a senior figure of Hamas. Hamas has confirmed that Taha was disloyal and that he had abused his authority to make money. He is still under investigation, a matter which is under a veil of secrecy, and there have been reports that he has been severely tortured. It emerges from the reports that Taha allowed people close to him to engage in illegal trading at the expense of hundreds of citizens who paid money for projects mostly in the connection with the smuggling tunnels, most of which were destroyed by uh, Sisi and by the Ligud government. Uh, other people have been involved in corruption affairs connected to taxation of goods passing through the tunnels are Hamas government spokesman Taher al Nunu and senior Hamas figure Mahmoud al Zahar. Al Zahar confirmed in a recent interview that he took part in illegal trading via the tunnels, which are also to smuggle weapons, and that his wealth amounted to some 6 billion Egyptian pounds, hundreds of millions of dollars. Another corruption affair was that of a senior Hamas figure who was exi exiled to Qatar in the pr prisoner release deal for the release of the Israeli soldier Gilad Salit, Sacher Jabarin. Jabarin is responsible for the payment of wages to families of Hamas prisoners and former prisoners. But the cherry on the cake, of course, is the conduct attributed to Hamas' foremost leaders, Khaled Massal, the head of the organization, political bureau, and Ismail Haniyeh, head of the organization in Gaza. It was reported recently that Mashal smuggled $12 million from Syria to Turkey under cover of the civil war in Syria. Mashal reportedly appointed someone by the name of Zibil Zani to transfer the money to Turkey in October 2012 from Mashal's brother-in-law. It was also reported that the money belonged to Hamas, but Mashal said that it had disappeared in the civil war. Furthermore, a Qatar real estate company has unveiled a seven-acre project in Qatar that includes four towers and a 2.5-acre commercial center owned by Michelle's wife and son. According to the company's engineer, the towers will be amongst the most prominent in Doha with a 250 luxury apartment, a private club, a kindergarten, and a library and a tourist attraction. As for Ismail Haniya, he, he reportedly owns some uh, 2,500 square meters of land in Amar. Almatar Street in the Al Ramah area in the Gaza Strip. The land is estimated to be worth about four million and is registered in the name of his son in law. According to press reports, Hania's wealth has risen in line with its popularity thanks to his involvement in the tunnels trade. It is also reported that Hania's son, who was also active in Hamas, 
was caught at the Rafa crossing with millions of dollars in his possession. It turns out that the tunnels are not just a pipeline for weapons, but also for the proceeds of corruption. There's a great deal of money then, and so it's no surprise that corruption is corresponding great. One newspaper published a Gatari document concerning a chap of $250 million sent to the Hamas government in the Gaza Strip. Right. Uh, concerning a check of $250 million sent to the Hamas government in the Gaza Strip in return for support for the regime of former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi. Now Morsi was supposed to be an Islamo-fascist and he was overturned by Sisi. And Sisi is pro-Western. He's a pro-Western politician. So, what, so what's the deal here? I mean, now the beneficiary of the check is Khaled Massal, of course. It's no wonder, therefore, that Egyptian television presenter mocked Mashal the other day. Khaled Mashal sits and eats in restaurants in Qatar. He runs his jihad from Qatar. My dear sir, Khaled Mashal, the jihad is in Gaza. Mr. Khaled and all his brave warriors in Gaza. People don't have, don't have enough to eat. Children are suffering. Buildings are destroyed with their inhabitants. And all this time, he resides in the most luxurious hotel in the most beautiful district in a room that overlooks the office that the Israelis opened there. Where's the courage? Where's the heroism? If you have a real spirit in you, go back tomorrow. Get on the first plane and come back to Egypt. Don't worry, we'll open the Raqqa crossing for you and make sure you get to the other side safely and reach your family home and healthy. Our brothers, the Palestinians, will greet you and you will meet your brother there. What's his name? It's Melchania. Sit in one of the hiding places underground and manage operations. He will stand at the head of your people. Every shepherd leads his flock. And so you're responsible for your people. A leader does not run away, a leader is not afraid, a leader does not run things by telephone. Khaled Michel, before the revolution in Syria against President Assad, brought a house there for four million dollars. A house for four million dollars. When his people in Gaza have nothing to eat. Uh, that, so that's what, that's what the great jihad warriors do. Sheikh Hania and Sheikh Marcel there are all you enter this. You think that Hamas corrupt behavior when they yet provokes Special protest in Gaza Strip. If only one could believe it. So why am I not surprised? Of course, there's no such thing as Gaza. There's no such thing as the West Bank. There's no such thing as the Palestinian state. It's all a bluff. It's all a. It's all a big lie. It's all a bluff created by the Gulf Emirates and the the Ayatollah government in Iran. Now, as for Hamas, the counterpart in the West Bank. Uh, what more proof do you need? I mean, when, uh, when Yitzhak Fleischer went to the studio, he took a cab by an Arab driver, and the Arab driver himself told Yitzhak Fleischer that, Hama uh, that, that Fadakh is nothing else but money-grabbing, corrupt politicians. Uh, and of course, Mahmoud Abbas, of course, is an agent of uh, the Gulf Emirates, Iran. And all the crap, he says, is, is being paid for by millions of dollars, of course. I mean, he doesn't do anything by chance. I mean, all, all the crap that Mahmoud Abbas says, or Ismail Khania says, or Khaled Marcel says, uh, I mean, they're not doing all this in vain. It's all being paid for. The tunnels will be rebuilt, probably, in the future. Qatar will send its, its millions of dollars there and will replace whatever was destroyed in the summer, in the summer of 2014. So it will be the same thing again and again and again and again and again and again and again. They will still kill their own people, and they will still pretend to be a state, they will still pretend that there's some sort of occupation, and all that crap will keep on going. And it will keep on going when, if America stops buying oil from Saudi Arabia and Qatar, and if Obama stops all this crap with uh, Hassan Rouhani, the Ayatollah, then there will be no more Palestine, there will be no more Hezbollah, there will be no more Ayatollah. There will more be and all these Islamic states, right. And we see Turkey being involved, of course, the Erdogan, the Wudogul government being involved in that. When 12 million dollars are being transferred from Syria to Turkey, what else do you expect? And when that other guy, uh, the, the other guy who was involved in the, in the abduction of the, the three kids from the Yeshiva, he was in Turkey too. I, remember, I forgot, Aruri, the, the, the guy from the West Bank, Fatah, who went to Turkey, He's an agent of Turkey, Khaled Mashal is an agent of Turkey, so we still see Turkey there. So if someone supports the pseudo-Palestinians who do not exist, he supports Turkey, Erdogan, Davutoglu and all that crap as well. As well as the Gulf Emirates, of course, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and all that Ayatollah crap.